you're filing your clients now, you start from the top up here. So you're using part number one, number one, once you get to the middle, number two, and once you get to the bottom, number three. When we're working on the top part, you want to point the client's finger downward. So with number one, going in one single direction. So from right to left, lift, from right to left, lift. Okay, so we're on part two because we're on the middle. And then the bottom of the drill would be considered part three. So we are doing this to remove the shine. This is prepping the clients now. Usually you would push back the client's cuticles and remove any dead skin that's around the cuticle area so that prevents any lifting. But of course it's a mannequin, so we do not have cuticles. So we're gonna go ahead and do the next nail and I'm just gonna fast forward so you guys don't have to stay stuck watching me do this. Okay, so now that we did that, the client's hand is done. And I usually just take any kind of brush, big brush, and just dust off any dust they have on their hands. All right, I went ahead and cut the client's nails. Now, I like to use a 100-180 grit file. Um, whenever you get a new file, you always want to take an old file and file down the edges because the edges are extremely sharp and will cut a client. But like I said, because I am working on a practice hand, I will just be using old products. So you cut the client's nails and you round off the edges. This will allow it to be easier when putting on the tips so they fit well. Just a tip, you never want to use a 180 or 100 grit file on a client's hand. It is way too coarse for you to be using it on a natural nail bed. You'll cause a lot of damage thinning out the client's nails. Next, what we're going to do, um, whenever working on your practice hand, you have to use flat tips uh, because the tips that are curved on the actual bottom piece here um, it will cause it to lift and pop off, so it makes it a whole lot easier. So you do want to use these flat tips here. I got these off of Amazon, I believe like $7. But we're just going to even this out here, and I am going to grab some nail glue. Once again, because I just filed off the edges here, I'm just going to dust it so it lays easier. But starting off with the pinky gonna apply a drop here on the client's nail and I'm just going to place it and hold it down until it sets okay. once it sets we're going to move on
The reason why I actually don't like these either is because um, when using these and wanting to do a clear nail, as you can see, the nail is actually um, like a translucent kind of color. So it will not be a crystal clear nail as most clients like. So whenever I do do a crystal clear nail, I'll usually just do it with a form. Now that we got the glue to dry, I'm gonna go ahead and cut it to the shape that the client would want um, and the length, but because I am the client working on a hand, I think I'm gonna do them pretty long, not like super long, but a decent length, oops. So I like to use a flat or a straight, nail clipper it just makes it easier gives you a better shape so i think i'm going to cut off about that much All right, so once we do that, I'm actually just going to uh, file it pretty much once I get this shape. So starting at the pinky, I'm just gonna file it so we have straight edge. off of these tips we're gonna dust off our client's hand to make sure there's no dust residue at all sitting on their nail beds um, and that's because we're gonna go in with this orally orly uh, gel fix sorry gel fx vitamin infused nail primer um, and I just go in with one coat of this this is gonna prep the nail for the acrylic. Making sure the entire nail bed itself is saturated. I'm then gonna go in with this uh, gel, gelish soak off gel polish BH, PH bond. Oh no, there it goes. And then I'm just gonna apply one layer of this bond i usually when i work on a hand i don't put the acrylic on excuse me i don't put the primer on just because it's a waste of product i mean there's not going to be any lifting or anything like that on a mannequin stand and i usually throw out the designs anyhow but the products i'm going to be using today is kiara sky um, and i'm going to be using mia secret so I like to grab any kind of rag, just put it to the side here and get my dipping dishes. The kind of brush that I use is a, a Precision Tool Round 10 brush. I normally like to stay around a 10 to a 12. That's the size that I prefer. Once you actually get into doing nails, you'll find what brush uh, suits you best, what you feel better with, more comfortable with. And a 10 to a 12 is what I feel comfortable with. I know some people who use a 16, but it does, but it does waste a lot of products. So I like to stick with um, something a little bit smaller, still decent, still is gonna do its job, but just prepping my area here. This is over, there we go. Okay, so first thing you always wanna do is apply a clear layer first. The clear layer is going to make sure that there's um, 
no little to no lifting uh, depending on what products you use um, anything that has a pigment in it will cause it to not bond will cause it to have a less likely chance of bonding as a um, acrylic that doesn't have a pigment would so putting a clear coat not only makes it easier for when you file but it helps everything bond together to the natural nail so just a technique that i do let me not waste this bead here what i do is i just wet dip my brush tap an excess off of the side and just pretty much swipe down if i see any air pockets i pat a little bit harder on the acrylic bead that i just had to remove those air pockets so i dip it in my acrylic i tap off the excess maybe like two three taps so i don't have it drowning and i just tap into my acrylic to the bead size that i want the more monomer you have sitting in your brush the bigger the bead uh, but you don't want to be dripping because it'll drip in your dish and cause a huge mess so once again i just dip it tap maybe three times and then just bounce my brush up and down until i get the size bead that i want Typically, I only ever do maybe one to two beads, depending on the length of the nail and depending on how pigmented the color is. So I had some air pockets, but as you see, I'm bouncing my brush on it like this so I can remove those air pockets. I'm going in with my second bead, a very small bead. That's just for the end. I'm just gonna push the product from the top to the bottom. And then last finger here of clear, bouncing my bead to the size that I want, putting it right after the cuticle. So when I'm ready to work on the cuticle, I take some monomer and I push that acrylic back right as close as I can to that cuticle so your client won't look like they need to fill sooner than what they should. Okay. Okay. So what I'm going to do with um, the ombre is I'm first going to go in with my first bead of white. So I tap it about two, three times into the white. I apply it in the middle of the nail, almost right where the bead, or excuse me, right where the nail, I apply it right where the tip would start. And then I just swipe up my product. If it looks like I need a little bit more filling in so it's not see-through, I'll apply a little bit more, just like that. And then I'll take a tiny bead and apply it to the tip of the nail all the way at the tippy top and swipe back to make sure my tip is completely covered in that white or whatever color you're ombre with. So I like to go through to all the nails applying the white first so it dries. Okay, so once I applied the white to all of the nails, I'm now going to go in with my pink. And if anybody is wondering, this is in the shade D404 Skin Tone. That's Kiara Sky. So I'm going to take a small bead. And with the pink, I always do maybe two beads. So I'm going to... Push it back as much as I can to blend it so no harsh lines. And I'm going to take 
my product and swipe up like that. All right, so for this nail, I banged it a little bit, but it's okay, because we're gonna cover it with these blue foils here. So just gonna scrape up a small amount here. I want some smaller shards. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a small amount of acrylic and place the acrylic where I would want my foil placement and just start picking up small pieces and placing them where I think it would look nice. And you wanna just do a small amount at a time, pressing down on that acrylic and those foils every chance you can get. So you make sure it sticks evenly You want to leave some acrylic on your brush to help you pick up these shards easier. we're good so as I wait for these nails to dry so I can get to filing them I'm gonna show you guys a easy step on how to clean your brush and maintaining the brush all right so now I'm just waiting for my nails here to dry up but while we wait for that I just want to show you guys an easy way to take care of your brush um, as you can see you get a lot of buildup here Hold on, let me let this focus. All right, you get a lot of buildup here on the brush itself. Inside the brush, there's a lot of monomer in here, but inside the brush, you'll get a lot of, excuse me, acrylic that gets stuck. So you wanna just scrape that off. Now, I never use the same pad that I use to wipe off my excess acrylic 
just because you're just going to be wiping to add more acrylic back into your brush. So what I like to do is use my napkin that I have here, my rag, whatever you call it. Take my acetone. I find it easier to put it in a monomer bottle, bottle and I'll just saturate the brush itself and the rag so I have acetone in this area. And I just like to roll the brush. Just watch my hand here. I just like to roll the brush through my fingers, not applying too much pressure because you don't want to fray the brush hairs. So I just apply a little bit and I'm not too sure how focused this will get, but you can kind of see like the acrylic sitting up here and that's what the rolling does when you do that. It'll roll whatever products down in this area up to the top and the acetone just keeps it soft. So I'll just do this maybe like three or four times in a row, um, maybe like 10 seconds each. Cause like I said, you don't wanna stress out the hairs and whatever you feel as if you can't get out. I always like to take like tweezers, like angle tweezers like this or something, anything to help remove any uh, particles that are stuck in these hairs. Um, I'll just pretty much just scrape through like I said, being extremely gentle because you will fray the hairs. So just going through, brushing out. And then once I do this and I feel like I got a generous amount of the product out, I'll do the rolling thing once more without the, the cuticle, or excuse me, without the um, utensil, just generally just twisting it again one more time. And you always want to dip your brush back into the monomer to condition that brush. So my brush is now conditioned, now cleaned, and I just like to flatten my brush um, to get out any excess liquid or any clumps of acrylic, making sure everything's out of the brush. And I like to put it back to a point. So when I'm ready to use it next time, it is the way it should be. So just like that, it's back to its point and the brush is ready to be used again. Whenever storing your brush, you never want to store it standing upward like this because whatever acetone you have up here is going to make the glue in here dissolve your hair follicles or not the hair follicles. Um, make whatever that's in here. Um, you never want to store your brush upward because the acetone that's sitting in the brush hairs itself will seep down to the glue that's sitting in this bronze area here, which will cause the glue to disintegrate your hairs to fall off. These brushes are not cheap, so you definitely want to take care of them as best as you can. I always suggest either pointing them downward so any liquid that's sitting up here drips out and you can clean it easier from the tip or lay it flat. And I don't have anywhere to store it, so my brushes always get stored flat. These nails should be dry now. So I'm going to go in with my 180 grit file. This side's the 180 grit. As you can see, I don't use the 100 grit side. But easy way to know a nail's dry. It's a loud tap. Easy way to know it's still wet. It sounds almost as if it's hollow. So you hear the difference? That's an easy way to know whether your nails dry or not. So just gonna go ahead and start filing these nails. Okay, so now that I'm done filing the sides of my client's nails, I'm going to have them twist their hand this way so I can see their hand like this. So my view would be like this. So this way we can see how straight the nail is to them. You want to make sure that nail looks extremely straight to them. And this mannequin is really hard to work with, so bear with me. But I like to just support their nails so i'll take my middle finger and my ring finger to hold their nail down here 
I'll take my pointer finger, hold the nail, and my thumb to hold the top of the nail. And that way they're not hurting at all. There's no uh, excess pressure on their nail, causing stress to their nail plate. But I'll just file that a little bit until I feel like it's straight enough. And then I'll just proceed to the rest of the nails, doing the exact same thing. And I always have my clients look at the nails to make sure everything's straight and 100%. So they leave here happy. And you want to be careful not to file too much off because it will cause you to shorten the nails down. Um, especially if the client likes the length it's at. You don't want to shorten that nail. But you can always fix the sides as well as you're working on the nail this way. Just to make sure everything looks good. Especially in their view. Because this is the way they're going to view their hands. Not like this. Okay, so just going to show you how the shaping looks. It's nice and slim and straight. Okay, so if you feel as if you have to go in and fix some edges so they're a little bit more sharp, that is okay to do. And that's usually what I always do after I file the top portion so I can actually see what I am working with with this nail shape. Okay, now I'm going to go in with my Melody Susie's nail drill and I'm going to go in with my gold drill bit. Okay, I'm going to start off with the cuticles, cleaning the cuticle area very lightly. And then I'm just going to go from step one to from step one all the way down to step three. And then I'm just going to show you what the structure should look like. Let me just show you here. So as you can see on this nail here, they have a nice slope here up until here. And then we straighten it back out. That's what the nail should prematurely look like. Now I'm going to go in with my buffing block. You don't want to bounce on a nail like this. That will cause pain to the client and also stress to the nail plate. You just want to swipe it back and forth using very little pressure. This is just to get any scores, scratches off of that nail and to smooth out any bumps we have. You're going to dust it off and apply whatever gems they want, whatever glitters they want, uh, drawings, whatever the case is. You're going to go ahead and add that. So I'm going to do that off camera and I'm going to show you guys the finished touch. All right, ladies. So this is the final look here. I am in love, in love, in love with this set. Anybody who knows or anybody who has me on social media, Facebook, you know the struggle that I just went through. My video, I had this actually recorded last night and the application of the acrylic actually didn't record. So I had to legit just redo the set all over again for you guys to make sure I had footage. So this is the set I did yesterday uh, just so I wasn't wasting any kind of products on um, the other nail um, or the other nails. I pretty much just did the ombre with the blue inside, but I just swapped over the gems and stuff to this side. 
but I just want to thank anybody who's watching my video, everybody who's supporting me. Um, I really hope that my videos help you guys with your nail designs, helping you build your nail career because I learned everything by myself. It wasn't easy, but I am still learning today. I learned through YouTube videos, um, watching other people do my nails. So I know how hard it can be when you don't have that help. So anything you guys want to learn, comment down below. Let me know what you want to learn about any basic tips, shaping, just let me know. Feel free to inbox me on Facebook at Glam Acrylics and Inks, Instagram, Glam Acrylics underscore or Snapchat trvp underscore lcrd and i'll apply that somewhere in this footage here so you guys know and it will be in the description box below make sure to subscribe make sure to like and comment on this video 100 views on this video maybe let's do 50 likes on this video and i'll post another one um in the next couple of days also be sure to hit that post notifications bar because i am going to be posting more bangers more bomb ass nails i mean look who wouldn't want to see these you know so definitely hit that post notification bar guys and thank you once again don't forget to subscribe bye